What's up, everybody? I'm Derek Gamer. Welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back and we are checking out Wulong. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 18 tips I wish I knew before I started a game. This is going to kind of get started, explain some things to you that when I first started playing, I was like, oh, a little confusing and to make your experience a lot easier as well. So make sure you subscribe, like the video. I have timestamps below so you can skip around for all the different tips in case you know some of them already. Share the videos with people that are started in Wulong. It's my family. Without further ado, let's dive in. Right. So starting off, this is the hub area. When in this area, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna start your next mission. You're gonna do a lot of stuff when it comes to building your character, your skills, your attributes, your weapons, all the things will be taken care of here. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna show this part a little bit later on as we go in a little more depth with some of the things we're gonna be able to do. So starting off, let's talk about the morale systems. If you look in the top right hand corner, next to the map, we see a 10, a 1 3, 0 2. What that means is that's my current reputation. So essentially, while you're in the area exploring, that tells you you're going to find three of these rest situations like this right here. And you're going to find two of the little smaller ones. And the goal of them are the higher you raise them up, the it impacts the damage that you receive when you're fighting your monsters and how strong they are. So if you look at some of the monsters we're about to go look at right now, we'll see, for example, this monster right here is number 13. I'm number 10. So that monster is going to do more damage to me three because it has a higher level than I do. So how do I overcome that? By finding the other two locations for the rest points and also finding the two smaller ones, which I'll show you in a second. So this is what I was talking about right here. This is going to raise your flag, mark your flag. My flag ain't there, and boom, my 42 rank increases to number 11. And now, if I die, it will not go below this level right now. So, the point of that is to remember earlier the other monster was level 13, now I'm level 11. Now, it does less damage on me. As you're going through the level as well, a lot of times you're going to see a red one like that. A red one means that there's a stronger enemy in the area. As long as you dispose of that one enemy, then you'll be fine. For example, if you guys know, if you play the demo, this tiger right here, you want to take care of the tiger. Because you take care of the tiger, it'll allow you to go back and get your point. So let's go do that real quick. Okay, so took care of him. Pick up his drop. As you can see right now, now we can utilize the situation. And now our level went up. Boom. Whenever you get those, your level goes up by two. When you get the smaller one, level goes up by one. So essentially what you want to do is go through the map. This kind of gives you an indication of how long or how big the area is. Cause you find yourself two or three. That means I'm pretty much two thirds of the way through on this map because this is a submission. So I should be pretty close to the end, but these are important because they're one, they're safe points, but also two, it decreases the amount of damage the enemy's doing on you. So rule of thumb, just trying to get it up all of them in the map if you can, cause it'll help you out towards the end with the boss. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is the deflecting system. Deflect or die is how it works in this game. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can do your regular attack. Deflect is where you dodge while the enemy's attacking you. You dodge in that moment, you're going to deflect the attack. You can also block as well, but I wouldn't recommend blocking. I would just recommend deflecting. So, for example, my name over here. If you notice, as I'm doing, as I'm deflecting, the deflection is really tight as well. If you play the demo, they really improved it. If you notice, it has a Sekiro vibe too. You see a little... Ooh. Ooh. You see a little bar building up as I'm hitting the monster? The goal is you want to get that bar up. What happens when you get that bar up, it goes to the point where it gets staggered. In that moment right now, you push triangle, you do a big attack, and boom. Most of the time, you can kill it or do a lot of big damage. So deflecting is what you want to do. All the bosses, all the enemies, majority of them, you want to deflect because especially when they do their big moves, which I'll show you in a second, those you want to want to deflect because when you when you break that, it gives you a big opening to recharge that gauge. All right, so big dude over here. Let me try and get him to do his move. Come on, do it. Where is it? Like that. See that move right there? See, it filled the gauge so much, and it gives me opportunity to boom. So what you want to do is you want to play aggressive. Don't be scared. You want to deflect all the abilities because that's how you're going to get that big 
filter gauge up the most, get that big opening, allowing you to do some disgusting damage. If you notice right now in the second tip, see how it's that bonded with her? What happens is that if you like an NPC that you like playing with, which I'll talk about a little later on, since it just popped up right now, I might as well talk about it. If you play with them a lot, you can bond with them. The higher the level is, at the, when you get to the high enough level, you'll get their gear. So if you like someone's drip, you want to look like them, that's the way to do it. So you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. You don't want to lose your points because if you die, what happens is you have to go fight that monster back to get your points back. But how do you know if you're at the point where you can level up before you go and risk it? If you notice right now, my points to 69,776 is yellow. That means that I am at the level where I can level up my character right now based on how much points I have. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you notice, now I'm about to 10K is white, meaning that I am not ready to level up. So if I want to risk it, I can't, but that's a quick way to tell if you're ready to level up. All right, next we're going to go over magic. At first, magic was super confusing to me. I was like, how does this system work? But it's actually really, really simple. So every time you over, I don't know exactly how many levels it is. I feel like it's almost every five levels you level up, you get points for all your skills. So the thing about magic is because it's just like, like Naruto, you can cancel out other magic if a monster uses the magic of the opposite attribute. So someone uses fire, I use ice on it, it cancels out. Or if I use water on it, it will cancel it out. So it's cool. So you're able to equip magic on your character on four magics at once. And there's multiple ways you can go about it. But just a basic how magic works. If you press the middle button right here, what happens is it will let you know what these attributes mean. So it's telling me I need to have at least one level in wood. I need to have my morale ranking at least level three in the level I'm in in order to use the skill. And I need it's gonna it's gonna utilize 343 magic or points in order to use the skill. Okay, so in the level I'm in right now, I have let's say this skill right here. I have a 17 ranking in morale. I have at least I got a point in it. As you can see here, I got up. I got 10 points in. What is that wood? So I want to, for example, for example, I'm going to use this skill. So this skill needs three points in wood, which I have and morale zero. I mean, you can use them whenever you want and it takes 695 points to use. So if you notice, there's no MP. So if I use it, boom, it takes up that much gauge in order for me to use that skill. The problem is if I get hit while I'm too close to my gauge being full, I'll get staggered and the monster will have a good opportunity to do a big hit on me. As you're fighting and counter and parrying, you might notice the, the blue side of your scale levels up. And oh, great. I wasn't trying to do this right now. Okay. I'll show on this guy. You see how um, that blue gauge is building up? That's what my meter needs for magic. If I don't have enough, what it will do is I will take that other meter. And that's kind of how it works. So you can always use your abilities. And the way to get this down is quick is a counter just like that. And as you can see, the other one. So you're never going to be in a situation where you're not going to utilize magic. It's just you have to be careful because if you use it too much, and you're in a situation like this, I get hit, I will get staggered. So you want to make sure you're very, very careful. So now looking at spells, you can see all the spells starting off in the game that you can equip, eventually equip. Some skills are going to be blocked by a quest you got to do later on in the game. After you do that, it allows you to move forward, similar to what we experienced in Neo. So that's how you would equip your skills, your spells in order to make sure that you can utilize them. Sometimes it tells you, hey, you can buy this spell, but you can't use it. Are you sure you want to use your points? And you can say, yes, I do. I don't care. At some point, I'll be able to use it. Or you can say no, and it will save that point. You can get something else. So now that you understand how to use magic, let's talk about loadout. So magic, you have four magic spells you can use at one time. The goal is to have the different elements on so you can counteract the elements based on what monster you're fighting. But for me, because I'm doing a melee build, I'm just focused on my raw power attack i'm using spells that are going to support my play style differently so yeah sure there's a lot of skills i can use that are offensive like this one it gives you a little picture in the bottom right and the, oh, it can blast the enemy shoot rock to the enemy shoot fireballs but for me personally i like using supportive buffs that help me go even do even more damage or protect me while i'm playing so if you example this one enhances my defense absorbs the health health region your, your nearby allies can restore hp upon dealing damage to enemies 
it just kind of keeps on going amplifies my damage but i take more damage so i put these two together because this one gives me a shield for a short period of time this one allows me to teleport and close the distance if i need to so these are the skills that i utilize my loadout to make me like the ultimate ninja but like i could be aggressive but i'm still protecting myself as well we talked about this earlier a little bit allies 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 so allies you use in order to use allies they come some most missions they have an ally with you and there's a thing called tiger seal you get these by doing some missions as well and what happens is you can bring them into battle with you if you want and then when they come into battle you can have them target the enemies you can you have some some control over what they can do but the more you build your relationship with them like i was saying earlier it allows you to one get their gear and they get even stronger so as you can see i probably use her the most and the rest of them are kind of like balanced out. You can switch them up. You can have up to two of them allies in any map will do as you're going through the game. So now let's talk about builds and how to read your equipment. So if you notice right here, it tells you what attributes, it tells you a lot of things. You press this in, it tells you all the skill points that you have on your current build and your current weapon. And from here, this is where you want to identify what armor and where you want to spend your magic points in order to get the most bang for your buck. So if you notice, this weapon has a A minus on what is it, water, a C minus on fire, and a D minus on wood, meaning that if I put more points into those categories i'll get bonus damage on my weapon so i'm using a dual swords because i like them they're cool so if primarily i want to spend my points on a and after i want to spend my points on c because it's it's c it's a c minus it's okay but it tells me it gives me a little variation of some of the magic spells i can use as i told you guys earlier i'm not using offensive skills if i use offensive skills then i would want to use primarily water skills maybe some fire, but since I'm using attacking this weapon, um, it's getting more damage buff based on how much points I'm putting into water. So that tells you exactly how you want to build your character. That way you're not have to worry about wasting damage. So as long as I'm putting these three categories, like I showed you earlier, right, real quick, then you're good. If you look at this, I've put 22 points in water, 13 points in fire and 10 points in wood. And I've gone through a good amount of the game with no problem at all because we do really, really good damage. Every time you level up, you get three points to your defense. So don't worry if you're not putting a lot of points into earth, you're still getting some defense with every single level. So that's how you read your weapon. Moving along, if you come down here, this tells you your normal attacks. That's all fine. But here is where things get interesting, your special effect. This tells you how many skills your weapon has and what, what skills it does have on it. If you notice, mine has two. So if I hit R1, that's my first skill, which I highly recommend for anybody using dual swords or dual weapons, because it shoots you up, which allows you to I'd press triangle and come down and smack the enemies. The second skill I have on my character is this one. So based on what the skills look like on the weapon, you might want to try a different weapon of the same type just so you get some different skill sets. Now coming down here, this is where things get juicy. When we start talking about building our characters and building, add changing skills on our weapon, if you see a little, see that, that play button, that if it's locked right there, that means you cannot change that skill. That skill is your attacking skill. You can only have, as of right now, you can only have one skill of each type. So there's attacking skill, there's a support skill, and if it has a little lock symbol, the little fully enclosed, like the place button the back of it. If you notice that one's closed, that one's closed is open because it has one half of it is exposed. You can change those two, but you can't change this one. So as you start getting to building our characters next, you want to think about how you want to optimize your character and what you're going after. Am I a range of wave character? Am I a spirit user? Do I use magic mostly? Do I use melee attack? All that stuff is important as you're looking at building your character. Moving along, we have range weapon as well, the crossbow, and we have throwing weapon, throws them, throwing knives, poison, and standard. Same thing, armor, armor applies. Armor matters, your defense. If you notice the little symbol to the um, right under where it says assassin's cap number two, move over to the left, you see a little, little helmet next to the, the image of the item. It has a little blue square figures filled out of three. That means it's a light armor. So light, it's if you just light. It's medium right here. See how it's green two, red three. That means it's heavy. So based on what kind of weapon you're using as well and how you want your play style, you might want to go light weapon armor or heavy armor. 
For example, this weapon I have right now, it says what? Damage bonus on light equip load. I get an A. So increase the damage, HP damage dealt based on proportion of lightness of your equipment load. The lighter I am, the more damage buff I get. So that's why I have the assassin gear on, so which makes me very, very light, which allows me to do even more damage in battle. So that's how I put the two attributes to better together to make my, to optimize my damage. So move it along as well. Armor is the same thing. Kills your defense, your defense resistance, your spirit resistance, and your standard resistance to all the elements as well. It tells you what abilities on them. Your armor pieces have armor as well. So your fatal strike, when I'm doing that stabbing attack, I do a bonus damage. And also too, if you notice it's closed, I can't change that one. But with your armor as well, you can change them as well. So if you ever confused or don't know what the skill does, just press in the middle button and allows you to kind of read through and identify what each part does. So same thing with weapons. I want to go through and change all those skills to make sure they all fit my playstyle and optimize my battle. Accessories, you have accessories available to you. And these accessories do just add more skills to you and to your character. So like I was saying, pick the one that makes sense for your character. Like I'm not gonna put a wizard spell, wizardry spell damage on me. If I'm doing melee, I'm gonna focus on melee attack damage and restore HP, things that make sense for your build. And also too, if you wanna go elemental build, here's ice attack power, increase my ice damage based on what you're going after. But typically I like to make raw builds. At the bottom, this is your healing potions, the things that you use, you find them in the different levels, which allows you to heal yourself more and more and more. So make sure you're looking through all the levels because you'll find, you might miss them if you're not paying attention. So that's how you build your character. Now you're like, oh man, DG, no, I spent my points in the wrong category. I didn't build my character correctly. Don't worry, they did something amazing. Early, early in the game, probably like 10 or five hours in, you find this dude and what he does, uh, does a lot of good things for you. First thing he does is allows you to respect your character without using any items or points. All you gotta do is un uh, lower it down, raise it back up wherever you want, and, and boom, you're good to go. And you can change it and based on whatever weapon, whatever style, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of weapons in this game. I'm glad they didn't limit us because you can switch your, your play style, mid play style, switch your build mid play and do whatever you want. So that's early, available to you early on. You want to change your character customization. You can do that as well. Accolade rewards. These are dope because <laughs> whenever you help somebody in the world that gets smoked, you see, you're going to see blue spears in the maps. And whenever you revenge somebody that got killed, you get points. And these points are good for a couple of things. One, you can use it and get some items, or you can get some gestures, or better yet, you can get some gear. So you can go through, it tells you randomly, you obtain a level one or level two sword, small chance of a level three sword. So I guess this is the, the loot box system that you can kind of go through and try and get as many gear as possible. Let's do one together. So I'm dual swords. I want to get a level three, a level four dual sword. Let's get something juicy. So I'm going to put it through, use my points, bronze dual sword. So I got a level three. Boo. What skills to have on it? Spirit gain, damage against enemy will burn. So enemy is on fire. I'll do extra damage. So not the greatest. So that's essentially what you can do to kind of use your points if you want. And this, if you push R2, it tells you what skills are on it. That way you can see if you want to utilize that weapon. So going back to builds, there's a lot of things you can do. One thing I would say, I'll just go through all these options. Embedment means that it allows you, it's something really cool. It allows you for, first of all, you can upgrade your gear. It, as you find materials later in the maps, you can upgrade the gear if you want, take it to a higher level. More importantly, say you want to start to talk about skills. So this is available to you very early in the game. And the cool thing it does is, I take a weapon, right? For example, this one. And I choose, I say, well, both of these are open. You see how I could choose both of them because none of them are locked. For example, this one, let me see one has multiple. Let's see, I can't change this one because it's locked, but this one I can change. I could take it off and say, yep, yeah. no, I'm gonna take that off. Then I click onto it again and I can replace it with the skill options available to me. This one I can do. I can't do a square because I didn't remove a square or a triangle. I removed a circle. So now I can pick from this list, put it on, and boom, 
now I have that ability on my weapon and boom, swap them out. Very, very easy, convenient and efficient. So that's what you will do with your weapons and that's what you will do with your armor as well. So moving on with your armor, you can take pieces off to assess your build a little more and customize it to your liking to make your character amazing. So moving along, you can decorate. Decorate, what it does is allows you to change the look of your gear. That's all, just as, as cosmetics. Doesn't affect any kind of, any kind of anything else. Just like, I want to look a certain way, but we pay for it and call it a day. So kind of call your layered armor. Salvage, this is what you want to do. You don't want to sell your stuff unless you need money, but most of the time you want to salvage it because what happens when you salvage it is if you, if you notice, if I were to salvage this, hold on. If I were to salvage this, it tells me on the right hand side, I'm going to get rank three steel and jewel fragment. You need jewel fragments in order to change, add new skills to your armor piece or your weapon. So it's good to salvage them as well. So you can get the pieces from them. Sometimes you get skills as well. So right now, if you look at the middle, it says agility. Agility impacts your speed. And what this does is the lighter you are, the faster you roll, the heavier you are, the slower you roll when you get the fat roll. So based on your character, I know sometimes you want to equip all the heaviest armor you got, but if you do that, you're not going to be able to dodge out of the way. You'll be able to deflect, but you won't be able to dodge quickly if needed. So make sure you're just mindful of that. This affects your gameplay as well. And some skills, like I showed you in my weapon, you get damage bonuses based on how much how slight you are or how heavy you are. Next, talk about Divine Beasts. So Divine Beasts are in this game as well. So you go to Battle Preparation, you set your Divine Beasts. Your Divine Beasts, based on the one, you, your attribute, how you're playing your character, you want to use the one that reflects you as well. So for me, I'm using Deflex, I'm light characters. So this one deflects, deflects Spirit Consumption, decrease my Fatal Strike damage is increased, which works really good for me. Water spells increase as well. I mean, spirit consumption decrease. I'm not necessarily using the spells. I guess I'm using my teleportation one, but more importantly, my deflexors, I can deflect more often. And when I do those fatal strikes, it does even more damage. That's why I'm able to one shot some enemies based on their ability. Also too, which your divine beast that tells you right there, you have two ways of summoning your divine beast. This time, if you press square and X, you will do the first one where, well, if you press triangle, and circle you'll summon the beast and some of the beasts will do a special ability and they'll go on this way if you press square and x on that point it allows you to take a buff to your character and you do more damage based on the elemental attributes of your divine beast so get your divine beast look at their skill sets and pick the one that resonates with you based on the build that you're going against the most important thing is for when you're doing this is identify a weapon you want to use pick the weapon first after you pick your weapon then you start building around it and your armor pieces, your accessories, your divine beast should all support what damage output you're trying to get on your character. I don't want to spoil it, but there's submissions and there's main missions. Sub main missions are the main missions you're going to do to keep your story going. Submissions you want to do because they're great. They're a great way to farm. You want to farm level up. You can do the main missions over again, but submissions are faster, quicker, and sometimes more efficient a way of farming and leveling up than doing one of the main missions as well. There's different submissions as you go through the game. So they will go higher and higher in difficulty. Do the highest one you can in order to get those points and level up your character. Last but not least, there's going to be little bears you're going to see in the game. I don't have one right now to show you, but it's going to be little bears. Those little bears, what they do is they are just chilling. If you drop a piece of equipment, what it will do is it will eat it and it will spit up an accessory for you to use. And I've gotten some pretty good accessories by doing that. So whenever you see them, don't walk them, don't walk past them or try to attack them. You can attack them, but drop some weapon or drop something. And I'm pretty sure the higher the value, the better your stuff you're going to get. And it will throw up something and it'll be a good piece for you to use in your character. Whew, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. I hope this video was value added for you guys to kind of walk you through some of the things that you might not be sure of when you're starting your journey. I've been enjoying and playing the game. I'm enjoying it. I'm about 30 hours into the game. It's been a blast. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Subscribe to the channel for more Wulong content. Give the video a thumbs up as well. Share it with people that are starting their journey that might not know. If you play some of the Neo games, you might be familiar with some of the concepts. Some of them are new. But if you haven't, this is a great way to kind of start your journey. But stay smooth, my family. Until next time, dear gamers, signing out.